Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome to my channel. This is Living in Alberta. Today we got a super fun video. We're gonna look at five things Albertans know that newcomers won't understand. Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. On this channel, we break down everything when it comes to moving to or living in Alberta. So if you do wanna see more videos like this one, make sure you do hit that subscribe button, click that notification bell so you are notified every single week when a new video comes out. And if you would like any help with your real estate needs, I am a licensed realtor in the province. You can use this information popping up on the screen right now. Get a hold of me any way you know how. We'd love to hear from you. All right, with that being said, let's get into it. All right, let's kick this off by with number one, something that people either think we're lying about or they just don't believe. Alberta has no rats. Yes, it's true. Alberta is the only province in the country that is rat free. It's actually one of the largest inhabited areas in the world or is the largest inhabited area in the world that does not have any rats. What? Are you serious? Deadly serious! Now, there's a few reasons for that. First off, we have a lot of natural borders. So we only have to worry about rats getting into the province from the eastern border with Saskatchewan and the southern border with the states. So all along the west side, we have the Canadian Rockies, which is a natural barrier. Rats aren't coming in through that way. Through the north, it's super cold. It's not very populated with people. We have the boreal forest, so we don't have to worry about that. Plus, there's no rats up in the Northwest Territories. So all we're worrying about is that Eastern border and that Southern border with the United States. Wow. I wonder where all the rats are gonna go. The second reason that Alberta has no rats is because back in the 1950s, Alberta went berserk, keeping the rats out of the province. We have a rat control zone that extends from the northern border of Montana, 600 kilometers north, all the way up to Cold Lake, and it's 30 kilometers wide. So in this control zone, the municipalities, there's this, I think there's seven municipalities, they have the responsibility of taking care of pest control. There's pest control officers. It's government funding and supplies. Is it? Pest control, you gotta do your part, mate. And back in the 1950s, as I was talking about to prevent rats from getting in, they were going crazy. They were using dynamite, blowing buildings up, blowing up earth, trying to get out these rats. And funny, not a funny story, kind of a crazy story. They actually used arsenic tracking powder back in the 50s. I think it was from 1950 to 1953. And that pretty much killed all the rats. But unfortunately, that stuff is super poisonous, so a lot of livestock and a lot of pets were killed also. So they stopped using that for obvious reasons. But that pest control zone with all the help of the municipalities, all the help of the county, all the help of the farmers, rats aren't getting into Alberta. And people, a lot of times, they don't believe me we actually do not have any rats in the province. Yes, the occasional rat might sneak in, but it gets taken care of very quick. I am almost 45 this year, I'll be 45 in November, and I have never seen an actual rat in my entire life. <laughs> Seriously? Oh. You cannot even have a rat as a pet here. I believe it's $5,000 per rat if you get caught with one or however many you have. So yes, Alberta is actually one of the only rat-free, or the only rat-free province in the country, and one of the largest inhabited places in the world that also is rat-free. We are in control! Yes, 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 yes. All right, let's move right along to number two. And this one, it's kind of funny. It makes me laugh, actually. I've been helping a lot of, a lot of people from Ontario move here. And there's a few things that they are always surprised by or they get excited by that they don't have back in Ontario. We've been doing lots of virtual showings plus in-person showings and something that Ontario people are surprised about all the time are corner pantries. 
Now, I don't get it. I don't know what you guys store your food in out there. I kind of thought corner pantries, you know, they're super useful. Just about every home out here in Alberta has them, minus homes that were built in the older times. But yes, we have corner pantries out here. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? People get super excited when they see them, so huge bonus if you're relocating here from Ontario. And I believe, I can't remember if the BC people were getting excited about them too, but Ontario people definitely excited about the corner pantries. Now this one, it kind of makes me laugh. And again, this is just kind of a normal thing out here in Alberta. And now that people from out of province or out of the country who are coming here, they bring it to my attention, it kind of makes me think a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, you know what? I don't really know what the point of that is. But a lot of the homes here in Alberta, we have a countertop built over the back of the toilets. So I'll throw up a picture here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. People from Ontario, they're always asking me what the point of that is. And honestly, I don't really know how to answer that. What, 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 what? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, maybe you can set your beer there when you're taking a number two or number one, whatever you're doing. A lot of the times people here in Alberta were putting reading material up there or Kleenex boxes. But yes, for some reason, I thought this was just kind of a thing that happened everywhere. We have the countertop extends from the sink over top of the back of the toilet. And people from Ontario, they're like, doesn't that make it hard to, you know, take the top of the toilet off and do whatever work you have to do? And I guess, you know, maybe it does actually. My toilets don't actually have that, but a lot of the toilets here in Alberta, they're gonna have that countertop, so get used to it. Is that is that normal? I am not sure yet. And last but not least, we'll combine this one, we'll put two together. Rounded drywall corners are a thing out here in Alberta. Again, people from Ontario, they say they've never seen that before. When you think about it though, it makes a lot of sense. A lot of times those corners on the drywall, whether you're pulling a vacuum cleaner around the corner or you have kids, they get dinged up super easy. So if you put a little bit of a round on them, a little bit of a curve, you're gonna negate that problem. And apparently we also have a lot of wet bars here. I'm not sure why. Again, I thought it was, I guess we wouldn't say there's a lot of wet bars here. Technically it's an upgrade. Maybe we drink a little more than the rest of the country, but yes, here in Alberta, we do love our wet bars and you're gonna find a lot of them. All right, let's talk about number three. And this one is kind of important. Let's talk about commuting and how far away you're going to live from wherever it is that you're working. So yes, it's one thing if you're commuting, say you live in Calgary or you live in Edmonton, you just live in one of the bedroom communities and you commute back and forth from work every day. I get that. A lot of the people are moving here from out of province, especially from the busy areas like the GTA and the lower mainland in British Columbia. They're always telling me, oh, I commute an hour and a half to two hours every day already. I'm gonna live in Red Deer, but I'm gonna work in Edmonton. And guys, I'm telling you, that is a bad idea. And that's because you have to consider, and this is what people don't understand, highway driving in the wintertime. Now here's my recommendation. If you're thinking of living a little farther out from the city or from where you work, I recommend not living any farther than 45 minutes away from wherever it is. I recently quit the fire department, as you know if you've been watching this channel for any amount of time. I moved out to an acreage north of Red Deer about 40 to 45 minutes commuted every day or not every day for my four days on working on the fire department. Summertime, not a problem. You know, you can have your coffee, listen to your podcast, whatever it is, it's kind of a nice little drive. Wintertime, it gets super old really, really quick. So if you're living farther away than 45 minutes, even 45 minutes, it was getting super old for me. That's an hour and a half every day, highway driving in the wintertime. You have to take this into consideration or you're gonna end up hating life. Now, yes, there are people who do it. I actually had a buddy on the fire department, worked in Red Deer, commuted you know, for a four days on from Airdrie. Don't know how he does it. I couldn't do it. That would drive me crazy. I can't live like this. You know, if you have a long day at work, I remember one day we had a big fire on the fire department. And of course I'm working with two officers. I'm only first class at the time and we needed to go shovel insulation up in an attic. And it had been plus 37 that day. 
Conveniently, although it's a pretty big attic, there was only room for me to go up there and shovel the vermiculite. So the officers, you know, they stayed down below, let you know, said, let me know if you need anything kind of thing. But nonetheless, after that day, I was bagged. And that was even in the summertime. But then having a 45 minute drive after that, or a 45 minute drive after a long night shift where I haven't slept all night, that really sucks. You're driving angry. You have to consider winter driving here. It's not like a lot of the other provinces, except for probably Manitoba, Saskatchewan. Those guys would be pretty similar to ours. But Ontario, BC, a little bit more milder climates. Obviously, the United States is going to be more mild. So even though you're commuting one and a half, whatever it is, two hours, an hour each way from wherever it is that you're coming from right now, the GTA, the lower mainland, it's probably fairly close to where it is that you're coming from. It's within traffic, it's not highway driving, and you probably don't have those winter conditions. So something that you have to consider. All right, moving on to number four. What people don't understand is that we have some crazy ass weather here in Alberta. Some people consider it bipolar or they call it bipolar, but it's not just in the winter time. In the summertime too, we get some crazy weather storms, some crazy, crazy storms here. It wasn't, I think it was just two weeks ago, maybe two and a half weeks ago. And the insurance tester was just out at my place today, actually, right before I shot this video. We got hammered with some hail. I was sitting out on the front porch. I was kind of watching the storm come in because I kind of like these big storms, these thunderstorms. But the top of the cloud was going one way, the bottom of the cloud was going the other way. And I'm thinking, holy shit, we're going to have a tornado. I didn't even think about hail. And instantly, boom we got rocked with the worst hailstorm that I've ever seen. I ran around, I got my dogs in the garage, I ran inside and I forgot at the time, or right now we're actually, we have a little baby calf that the mother didn't want. So we're taking care of it, we're raising it. Basically, it's, she thinks she's a dog, she's one of our pets. And I forgot about her and she took off running and the poor thing got caught in the hailstorm. My poor little Georgia, I felt so bad for her. She was pissed and this hail, was massive. I tried to run outside, tried to find her, and I got pelted in the head. I had to get back inside. I had some clients who were moving here to an acreage in Pinoca, and obviously it rains a lot in BC. It's kind of overcast a lot, but they said they've never seen storms like this. When they were actually moving here, they had to pull over because the rain was so bad they couldn't see out their front windshield. So yes, we get some very, very crazy weather here. Not just wintertime, it happens in the summertime too. Some things to keep in mind is that our climate here is really, really dry. If that's not something that you're used to, boy, you're gonna be in for a shock. So I know every winter time, my knuckles get so dried out, I'm always putting on lotion. I hear a lot of people telling me that they call it the itchy season throughout the winter time because it's just so dry. You're scratching all the time, you're putting on a ton of lotion. And another thing to keep in mind is, and I know I've talked about this before and it kind of seems silly a little bit, but I just recently got my vitamin D levels checked and even though it's the middle of summer, I think I've been inside too much shooting videos, I don't know what it is, but my vitamin D levels were in the toilet. There's not really an excuse for that to be happening in the summertime, but in the wintertime, we get six months of winter, that sunlight doesn't convert to, vit to vitamin D in the winter time, so you're gonna to wanna to be supplementing with that. So crazy weather, very dry here. Don't forget to supplement with your vitamin D as well. All right, let's talk about the last one. And this one's super important, guys. If you're moving here from out of province or moving here from out of the country, you gotta understand that this is a very, very intense hockey province. And that stems from the rivalry from the Oilers and the Flames. And what you even need to understand even more is who to cheer for. Now, I know if you're moving from Ontario, you're probably cheering for Toronto. I mean, I can kind of understand that one. If you're cheering for Montreal, don't even bother coming. Stay where you are. Vancouver, no, come on. If you're moving to Alberta, look, we have the Oilers and the Flames. The Oilers beat the Flames out in five games last year. Calgary just traded Johnny Gaudreau, so I mean... Come on, the Flames are on the back burner. The Oilers just re-signed everybody else. They got Dry Saddle, McDavid, they re-signed Kane, they picked up a new goalie. The Stanley Cup is coming to Edmonton, guys. So if you are moving to Alberta, make sure you're cheering for the right team. You gotta understand who it is, and that is 100% the Oilers. Watching McDavid play is phenomenal. So if you are moving here, flames are on the way out, guys. They're on the back burner. You gotta cheer for the Oilers. Alberta's a crazy place. We don't have rats. 
We got some crazy weather here. We got all forms of geography from the deserts out by Drumheller, the mountain ranges out on the west side. We got the boreal forest up north. We have the prairies and the parkland, so very diverse in, in geography. Geography? What did you say? I don't understand you. In geography, I know there was a couple points in this video that were a little bit on the humor side, but there's absolutely a few that you have to consider and take them very seriously, especially that commute and the crazy weather that we have here. So if you did enjoy the video, guys, make sure you hit that like button, click that notification bell, and hit that subscribe button. And if you would like any help with the real estate needs, use this info, guys, popping up on the screen right now. Get a hold of me any way you know how. Would love to hear from you. All right, I will see you guys next week. Cheers.